Welcome! In this video, we will continue working with the WKB or semi-classical approximation. And in particular, we will deal with the case where the energy is greater than the potential, which is what we call the classical region. In this video, I will show you how to deal with potentials that are kind of like the infinite square well. So basically, what we will see in this video will be good for any potential, of course, in which you can apply the WKB approximation, um, with a form of the infinite square well and with some function in the middle. So basically this will be valid for the infinite square well with some bumpy potential, right? It can be anything. We won't go into specifics in this video. We will derive a general formula and I'll show you how to work with it later. So the potential here, just to be clear, is infinity everywhere except for between zero and a, where our potential is some unspecified v of x, okay? Now let's recall the results that we found in the previous video. So we know that in this case, our wave function, according to the WKB approximation, is this thing right here, where the potential is the classical potential. So now what we want to do is go as far as we can go in this particular situation with these equations. So of course, now we need to tell these equations which situation we are in. And how do we do that? Well, let's give it our boundary conditions. So boundary conditions. That is basically telling our wave function that we cannot go outside of zero and of A. That's what we are now doing. So our boundary conditions, since the potential is infinite when it's X is smaller than zero and greater than A, psi of zero, has to be zero, and psi of a also has to be zero. Those are our two boundary conditions here. So let us write our uh, wave function here explicitly, because as it, is, as it stands there, you can see that there is a plus minus, because there are two possible uh, directions that our wave could be going, right? One positive, one negative. So let's begin with the positive one. So i h bar integral of px dx and then we have plus c2 right just giving our constants of integration any name you can call them a b whatever you want so this one here is negative integral of p of x dx now writing this integral the entire time is going to be a little bit annoying so we can go back to the notation that we had in the previous video which is that phi of x this is the integral. For now, we will not use any boundaries, but we will add them later. Remember that because we are in this integral, any basically, if this is an indefinite integral with no boundaries, we will get plus c when we integrate, which will basically mean multiply by e to the c, which is simply any constant. And multiplied by another constant, we can simply absorb it into um, this constant there. So for that reason, we have a freedom to choose the limits of our integral. So for now, we will not assign them and we will only do so when we actually solve the integral. So using this notation, we can simplify this. So this will be phi of x. You don't have to do this, by the way. You can simply stick to the other notation, but this will make um, writing down everything a little bit easier. So now, um, let's simplify this even further. We, we could apply boundary conditions here, but applying them after we rewrite this to sines and cosines make it a bit easier, at least for me. If you can easily do it like this, then go ahead. I personally um, like using um, the sine and cosine notation. So we will use that e to the i x is simply cosine x plus i sine x, right? So using that, we now get c1 square root of p over x factor of cosine of phi of x over h bar and then we get plus i times sine of phi of x over h bar plus okay and then we close this then we have c2 square root of p of x times cosine of minus, but cosine is even, so the minus um, doesn't matter, right? Cosine of, I don't know, uh, theta or minus theta is the same as cosine theta, right? It is an even function. So this is cosine of phi of x 
divided by h bar. And then finally, we have plus i sine of phi of x divided by h bar, but this time the minus sign because sine of minus theta is minus sine of theta. So the minus sign, we can pull it to the front here. So we get minus this. Okay, now we can just put everything together, right? Our cosines and sines. So let's factor out, well, first of all, this one over square root of p over x. And then let's factor by cosine. So cosine of phi of x over h bar factor of we have c1 here, so c1 plus c2 here. Then we factor by sine of phi of x over h bar, and we get i c1 minus i c2. Now notice that this is any constant plus any constant, and this is i any constant minus i any constant. So we can simply define a new constant, we can name it anything, I'm not creative, so I will define it as c plus, and we can say c1 my, uh, with an i, this is now c minus, for no particular reason, you can call them a, b, I don't know, um, whatever your creative mind can come up with. So this is psi of x, 1 over square root of pi of x, and now we get c plus cosine of phi of x over h bar plus c minus sine of phi of x divided by h bar. There we go. And now this is much, much easier to apply boundary conditions, right? All this was simply so that we can get to something where applying boundary conditions is simpler. So let's begin with x equals zero, right? Um, because it's always easier to apply to put x equals zero into our equations, right? It's much more, much more simpler than going for psi a. We're going to have to use that anyways later, but this is a good start. So psi of zero, this is one over square root of p of zero, and then we have c plus cosine of psi of zero over h bar. And then we get c minus sine of phi of zero h bar. So the question is, well, what is psi of zero? So psi of x, as we saw before, um, it's far up there, so I'll write it again. This is the integral from zero. Well, this was indefinite before. Now we can actually um, put the the limits of integration. Because in this problem, we begin here from zero. Basically, we're going to be integrating, we want to integrate over all of x, but of course, during the majority of x, we don't have a wave function. So we're going to integrate from zero up to our point x. And if we x is equal to a, of course, we will integrate over our entire um, space of interest. So we will go from zero to x, right? The, and we have the freedom to do this, of course, because any um, constant that comes out will simply go into our constant of integration. So this times our p of x dx. But what is our p of x? Right. This is going to be um, the, so I'm going to write it here, p of x is square root of 2m, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be covering it with my screen, um, e minus v of x, right? So what happens to this integral if x is equal to zero? So basically, what happens in this case? Wait, there we go, zero. Then we are integrating from zero to zero, right? So integrating from zero to zero, we simply get zero. So in this case, of course, the, the particular momentum didn't really matter much. So that means that phi of zero is zero. So this in here is cosine of zero, and this in here is sine of zero, which of course is zero. However, cosine of zero is one. So psi of zero is one over the square root of our momentum evaluated at zero. 
times c plus. And this has to be equal to zero. So the only reasonable way to achieve this is to say that c plus has to be equal to zero. Okay, now let's go for the second condition. So psi of a has to be equal to zero. Now all that remains from our wave function is, let's see, psi of a, it is now one over square root of e of a um, times c minus sine of psi of a over h bar. And this has to be equal to zero. So for this to be equal to zero, we need the sine of phi of a over h bar to be equal to zero, which means that phi of a over h bar has to be equal to n pi, right? Because sine is zero at pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, and so on. So with n um, going from zero, one, two, three, etc. And this means that phi of a, which is the square root, is the square root, <laughs> the integral, sorry, from zero to a of our momentum, this is equal to um, n pi h bar, right? Simply multiplying that h bar. And this is, of course, equivalent to writing integral from 0 to a of the square root of 2m e minus v of x dx, of course. This is equal to n pi h bar. So this is our main result. We can use this to find any, or basically for, for any potential that is like the infinite square well. And this v of x, of course, is the potential that is inside of the square well. So let me just quickly show you how to use it. So what we have to do here, for example, if we are dealing with the case for the infinite square well, where the potential is zero, well, we simply take our integral with the potential equal to zero, which is square root of 2me dx. This is equal to n pi h bar. Now, this integral doesn't depend on x, so we get square root of 2me times a is equal to n pi h bar. So from here, we square everything, we get rid of 2m a squared, so we get e, maybe we can write it as sub n, n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m a squared. So there we go. That's how easily we can find the energy level of the infinite square well. And of course, we can do this for any other configuration. Um, in the next video, we will do an example from Griffiths 8.1, where I will show you how to do it for another uh, kind of potential. But as you can see, using the WKB approximation, we have gone from having to solve the Schrodinger equation to simply solving one interest. So we simply have to use this formula and we're done. But of course, you have to understand the limitations. You can only use this formula when we're dealing with an infinite square well. Otherwise, you have to just go back a little bit um, and start off with our general formulas. But it's still going to be much, much easier than having to solve the Schrodinger equation. So that is everything for this video. I hope it was useful to you. If it was, please consider checking out my other videos, maybe just comment, like, and subscribe, and all those things, you know the drill, and maybe check out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.